Hey, what's going on, you guys? Welcome back to another episode with I Track. Let me start this video out by giving every one of my subscribers a big shout out. Everybody that's part of the I Track fan, man, I appreciate each and every one of you. There isn't a channel on YouTube that will be successful or thrive without the subscribers. So much, much love to each and every one of you. I'm going to give a special shout out to Karen Bowes and Chelsea Richardson for grabbing badges. That's the motivation, man. I appreciate you guys. If this is your first time here, what we like to do is take a look at the most interesting and creepy TikToks and kind of evaluate for ourselves whether these are fact or fake. If you haven't already, go ahead and smash that like button. Smash the subscribe button if you're not already a part of the iTrack fam. And without any further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. She's scared to open my door. The reason I had to move out of my flat. I was home alone. Then what's your name then? Yeah, if any of that's happening inside my house, hey, I'm out of there. Quick. I heard about these mages in Indonesia. They can literally teleport. They can materialize things out of thin air. And so I was like, I want to find the best one. And I did. Royalty fly to, to meet him. I mean, he could do incredible things. Some of which I'm not even supposed to talk about. And I ended up staying with him for a month. He had me put my hands in like near boiling water to like merge with the fire element and like ice cold pool for like, you know, springs for an hour and doing all sorts of things to like balance the energies and learn about energies. And then he had me go into this cave and this cave is huge. There's branches of this cave that the local government actually blocked off because people would go in it and disappear. And the story is like, they'll either end up in the ocean like 30 miles away or there's another cave where they'll end up coming back in their age like 50 years even for me i'm like this sounds crazy but like after seeing you know what he can do it's like okay it's a crazy cave there's giant spiders and scorpions and cobras that can kill you in this cave and he said go in there and it was like pitch dark and he put a magic circle around me just a little magic spell for a few minutes and he left me all night and i couldn't sleep at all and there's so much weird stuff going on both physical and spiritual, but it was a way to initiate me to realize, okay, you know, no matter what happens in the physical, everything starts in the spiritual realm. And this is just like a manifestation key because I had this billionaire to tell me like in the 3D world, in the realm of effect, you don't have a lot of power because it's already manifested. Everything starts in the spiritual world. So if you really know how to work it, you start there and that trickles down and it's like that protected me. I was not touched, even though there was literally a million things all around me. And so that really anchored it in deeper, that trust and spirit. and. That's how you really manifest is from connecting with that plane first. Yeah, I definitely think that's a fact. And also, I think that uh, traveling exposes you to situations like that. So you can kind of come to conclusions that, it, you know, life is just a lot more than what we see. Clayton here in northern Egypt, not too far from the Israeli border where Egypt just dropped a bombshell. Is this a huge middle finger to the United States and Israel? I'll get to that in a minute. Of course, just north of this location is the Israeli border and now all out war against Hamas, all out war against the Gaza Strip. And if you didn't think a world war was possible before with the NATO war in Ukraine, 
will get ready. A few hours ago, the Israeli Defense Ministry just announced an invasion and destruction of Gaza. And I'm quoting him now. There will be no electricity, no food, no fuel. We are fighting human animals and we will act accordingly. Many people on social media saying, well, that would be a war crime. Of course, the term war crime is being used a lot in the past few days being in Gaza. The country of Lebanon just fired a dozen rockets at Israeli targets, warning Israel, stay out of Gaza. If Israel invades Gaza, that will bring a response from Hezbollah. All bets are off. A stunning admission today, just actually a few minutes ago, from Egypt. Egypt's top intelligence officials saying that Israel totally dropped the ball here. They ignored huge warning signs that something big was coming from Hamas in Gaza, and they did nothing to stop it. In other words, Egypt says Israel knew this was coming. They warned Israel. They had multiple conversations about it. They admitted this. Israel has arguably the most sophisticated intelligence service in the world, and yet they purposefully didn't do anything to stop it. Egypt says they knew about it. So if that's true, why would they do that? Why would Israel ignore a potential attack? Well, let you make up your own minds on that. So This is just another case of there's nothing new under the sun. Wars and rumors of wars. It's been going on since the beginning of time. Very, very wild. This is the roller coaster with the very goal of killing all passengers. In 2010, a PhD student from London designed this roller coaster to provide a euphoric and humane death for people who opted for euthanasia. During the loops, about 10G are applied to the passengers. The resulting lack of blood supply to the brain leads first to unconsciousness and finally to death. I, I don't even know how to say this. He started to put my legs apart and this female brought a baby and and she sort of handed him to me and I instantly said I, I, uh, this baby is mine I know I know he's mine she pulled the baby away from me and said no this baby is ours I've been shown children I've been shown babies I've been asked to hold children and babies I've been asked to give these children affection and uh, these children aren't alien children and they're not human children they're somewhere in between in like little glass boxes i've seen these babies their bodies are very very tiny they look very thin and emaciated almost and they're very quiet and they don't move and it's almost a very sad picture for some reason they put like a jock strap on you of some sort with a tube attached to it and it runs to a machine and they somehow extract sperm. I don't know how they do it. The most humiliating thing that happened to me is they put a cylindrical sort of thing over my genitals and it made me have an orgasm in a second. And I really feel like I'm one of those few men who knows what a woman feels like if she, when she's raped. I was being invaded. The only way I can explain it is I know what it's like to be raped. I think what we need at this point is uh, science to simply say, okay, okay, it's going on. I want to look into it. What's the matter with that? Wait, what? Oh, yeah. Got to rewind that one back for sure. China has discovered a special type of crystal on the moon worth up to $1.5 trillion, and it has the potential to solve the energy crisis for the whole planet. But the important thing is not its price, but what they found inside the crystal a new type of mineral that can provide an almost unlimited source of energy for humans. The main component of this mineral is helium-3, a very rare element on Earth and very expensive. The amount of helium-3 on the moon could solve the energy shortage for humans almost forever because it is the essential fuel for nuclear fusion reactions that create a huge source of energy, like the way the sun is still releasing energy. To illustrate, Take the example of Mumbai, the most populous city in India, which consumes 20,000 MW of energy per day, and one gram of helium-3 can generate 165 MW of energy, meaning that only 121 grams of helium-3 can supply energy for the whole Mumbai, while only 66 grams are enough for New York City. And the very important point is that it does not create excess radiation. According to estimates, 
The moon contains about 1.1 million tons of helium-3, but the country that found it is China. So we still don't know what will happen next. Now that's one of those clips. I'm not sure if that's fact or fake. But if you happen to know something I don't, definitely let me know in the comments. <laughs> Wow. Now that's crazy how they would just assume that that was like the archangel. Because at the end of the clip, you see it looks like a spaceship or something like that hovering in the sky. If that was Archangel, like, I'm, I'm not sure that they, you know, they're traveling on spaceships like that. You know, they're mixing stories somewhere in there. Let me know what you think in the, in the comments, though. If you take the battery out of your phone, I can still listen to you. In the old days when you took the batteries out, you take the batteries out and think you're good and you go in there and skiff and you can talk about whatever you want. Oh, I could still listen to you. Damn. We were doing stuff that you could never find what we were doing. Ever. And you never will. And it's in every piece of equipment right now. In every chip. Right now, there's, there's stuff. And where are we buying all the chips from? China. Uh, again, this is, this is from a conversation. Again, we've had multiple conversations privately. But you said something that was yep. very, very telling. You were like, if you didn't, like, you acknowledge, again, it goes back to your self-awareness. You acknowledge that if you did not go at Drake, this thing, everything that you have done, how big you are in the game, it probably wouldn't be that. I don't, a lot of people- That nigga tried to sacrifice me. That nigga tried to sacrifice. I hate, I hate speaking on it. And I, and I want to say this right now. I want to say this on this video. I, I apologize to Drake for, for coming for his mom. I saw you as a business opportunity as you saw me as a business opportunity. As you extorted the cadence from that song. I don't, I'm not going to argue. It is what it is, nigga. The cadence is exact fucking same. And if I'm just an emotional bitch ass nigga, then it is what it is. We agree to disagree like men. But I apologize because talking about his mom was wrong. I needed to do that. I needed to do that so they could take me seriously. And he was a stepping stone like I was a stepping stone. So I apologize for disrespecting your mom. I apologize for coming at you, talking about you crazy, and talking about you crazy and threatening you and shit. And I apologize as a man to a man. I apologize genuinely. If I had the opportunity to speak to bro, I would tell him I apologize. I would have been apologized before I wanted to fight his ass on a thousand. Before I wanted to fight him, before I absolutely wanted to fight bro. Now it's like I understand. Now it's I understand more because I grow day by day. People forget, bro. I'm 19 years old. I, didn't, I was not saying my age before, but people were seeing face tattoos like, oh, this little nigga got to be at least like 20, 23. You know what I'm saying? Nah, bro, fucking 19 years old. My birthday on the 23rd, which is a couple days from now. I'm fucking 19 years old. I'm just about to turn 20. Hey, I, when you did go against Drake, though. Wait, wait, okay, yeah, you said, yeah, you said, um, if I didn't do that. Yeah, no. No, no, no. I, well, I was really trying to get to the courage of doing it because I don't think I don't think anybody else would. Would do it. We see a lot of young artists. Every young yeah. artist he's just fuck with. Yeah. No one is gonna. And, and by the way, there's been other people who have accused them of jacking their song or their flow. And they and they went right behind them and kissed his ass and 
shook his hand and smiled in his face. Nah, bro. Why didn't I'm, you? Why, why, why didn't bro, you? I'm solid, bro. I'm no, solid. Keep bro. it on it. Was it because you were in jail? Because man, had, had you not been in jail, would you? Have been if I if I was not in if I was outside of jail and bro took my shit and previewed my shit in Amsterdam like he did, I would have, bro. What? If I, bro, we probably actually, I probably actually would have found a way to find, bro. And it would have been real, 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 like trying to do some shit. Cause then I wouldn't be on probation. It would have been, it would have been more crazy. It would have been more crazy. And yes, I would have did exactly what I did. Because let me tell you something: getting out of jail and not wanting going back, to, not wanting to go back to jail, put a restraint on my mind. You know what I'm saying? It put a restraint on my mind, so it made me not do certain things, bro. Before I was fucking reckless, bro. Let me tell you something, bro. I was fucking reckless, bro. I didn't give a fuck, bro, about nothing, bro. Because I didn't have no family telling me what to do. You know what I'm saying? I had family, but I ain't have family. You know what I'm saying? Nobody could tell me nothing, bro. I was moving on my own, doing everything on my own, and I was fucking psychotic, bro. And that's why I tell people, like, yeah, I don't blame y'all. If y'all fucking hate me, you could choose to hate me. But I'm evolving sl slowly but surely. Not even slowly, nigga. I'm evolving fast. Yes, the shit is still there. Yes, the anger is still there, but I know how to deal with it. Now I've turned it into compassion for others. I drive my anger and I make sure it's towards something positive. And I make sure, like, if I'm angry, bro, I'm gonna make sure I drop the fucking greatest songs I can for these kids so I can see these they smiles on their fucking faces. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna put that compassion into something else. I'm not gonna let that drive me to destroy myself because then I'm destroying over a, a fucking million kids, bro. So yes, before, fuck yeah, bro, I would have been, bro, it would have been worse. Because I would have been real fucking reckless, bro. Yeah, X has definitely been one of them people that's just kind of always been aware of who he is, where he's at, where he's trying to go, and how he's going to get there. Uh, which is pretty rare. A lot of people, you know, don't know those things. Scientists have tried to figure out how to use plastic in unique ways to help reduce global pollution. One uh, team has broken down plastic waste and turned it into a molecule that tastes a little vanilla-ish. How one artist now uses the product to make ice cream. I remember as a kid making fake ice cream, but I didn't think we would actually be eating it. So developed by scientists in Edinburgh, these bastards invented the world's first food made from plastic. And when I say plastic I'm not talking this, I'm talking plastic waste. Not that it's any better. Don't let them fool you. Consuming plastic leads to stomach pain, cancer, nausea, vomiting, and constipation as your body tries to expel it. Real ice cream, Frozen dairy food is made from cream or butterfat, milk, sugar, and natural flavoring. Be aware of these fake foods. Well, once you get 30 years old and your mind is closed off, you basically said, fuck life. You basically said, yo, I'm dead. Because no matter, bro, the, the purpose to life, bro, I'm going to say this forever, is creation and evolution. If you refuse to evolute your current mind state, or your mind set, you stuck, you dead, you die. You're dead, you're stuck. Bro, every single fucking day, bro, I'm trying to evolve. I'm trying to evolve at a pace that I would like though, so I don't gotta go through some shit I don't wanna go through. You know what I'm saying? Memory programming is a very important thing. You will realize that one of the most important things of the fucking mind is memory. Cause if you can't, rem if you can't remember, you can't exist. Ah. Mm. Uh, where does consciousness come from? Memory programming. If you don't know your name, you're not you. If you don't know how to speak, you're not you. You're just a fucking brain existing. Memory. So I play with my memory. Yes, I do. I definitely agree with him about that. There definitely is a certain part of your life where you just either are growing or you're just stagnant. You know, you're comfortable. So yeah, I agree with that. You can disappear tomorrow, right? I can walk you through three steps right now that's going to help you disappear tomorrow but none of them are convenient. They're all extremely secure, right? The first thing you do is every piece of digital technology you have that is that is connected to you in any way is now dead. You just let the battery run out. Forever. Forever. You never touch it again, starting at this moment. What you have to do is go out and acquire a new one. Realistically, you will not be able to acquire a new one in the United States by buying it. 
because to do so, you would tie it to your credit card. You would tie it to a location, a time, a place, a registered name, whatever else. So you would have to acquire it essentially by theft Mm -hmm. or through the black market. So you would want something because you're going to need the advantage of technology without it being in your name. So you go out and you steal a phone or you steal a laptop. You do whatever you have to do to make sure that you can get on with the password and whatever else that might be as, as dirty or as clean as you want that to be. We're all morally flexible here. But now you have a technological device that you can work with. Uh, And then from there on, you're just doing whatever you have to do, whether you're stealing every step of the way or whether you you run a massive con. Keep in mind that we often talk about con men and cons. Do you know what the root, the word that con is a root word for? Confidence. That's what a con man is. A con man is a confidence man. Mm -hmm. Just somebody who is so brazenly confident That the people around them living in their own perception, not perspective, in their perception, they're like, well, this guy really knows what he's talking about. So I'm going to do what he says. So you can run a massive con and that can take care of your finances. That can take care of your lodging, whatever amount, whatever else it is. You are whoever you present yourself to be. So if you want to go be, if you want to be Bill for the afternoon, just go tell people your name is Bill. They're not going to question you. So the intelligence, the natural web of intelligence gathering systems we have in the United States and in the world, are they going to believe for long that you're Bill? Are they- Until you do something that makes them think otherwise. If you are consistent, we talked about consistency being the superpower. If you are consistent, they will think you're Bill forever. He dropped so many gems in that one clip. That's one of those clips that you got to run back because uh, gems. I don't believe in coincidences. I, I used to. I now, when I was very much a materialistic thinker, I believed in coincidences. Now I don't believe in coincidences at all, at all, because I've had way too many examples where I had thought previously something was coincidence, and I realized later that it was all part of a macro pattern that was just too large for me to see from my zoomed in too close to the tree to see the forest perspective. As soon as you zoom out and start looking at things from a larger standpoint, then those patterns start to become more visible Mm -hmm. to the naked eye. And you start realizing I'm learning something through this. Yeah, I totally agree with that whole clip as well. Uh, I don't believe in coincidences at all. I definitely believe at this point in my life that everything is for a reason one way or the other. Live in a simulation because life rearranged spells file and it's being recorded by the two eyes. This is the only thing that exists. It's an electromagnetic toroidal field. This field creates all things in nature. The flower of life is a top down view of this torus field. This spiral of energy creates all things in nature. Your spirit is a spiral of energy. This is why they share the same root word. The torus field is a unit of light and it's 99.9% empty space. Therefore, everything's made out of light. Low vibrational light turns turns into matter, high vibrational matter turns into light. At the center of every torus field, there's a hyperboloid, which is the inhale and then exhale of energy. Our nose is the same thing. It's a hyperboloid, which inhales and exhales and renews life. This is why the seeds are in the center of the apple, because it renews life. This is where the infinity sign comes from. It's the torus field. The torus field gives you the past, present and future. The only thing that exists is an indefinite now. There is no past or future. What you recall as a memory is actually energy. Everything in this matrix simulation is red and blue because the torus field is white light splitting into red and then blue light. This is why the police sirens have white light and red and blue. The link is in the bio for this PDF for more information. I update it forever so you'll get in my notes forever. Yeah, he definitely was spilling a lot of tea. I'm gonna find his link and I'll put it in the description so you can check out his PDF for yourself. When you reach a certain frequency, the universe will send you souls who will help you exit your repeating loops of karma. These people are a reflection of your own readiness and determination to achieve growth. Together, you are walking each other home to authenticity and wholeness. B.Y. is real for everybody that remembers this video right here. What if I told you that it wasn't real? Nobody died in this accident and the person that's in question is still living amongst us today. What if I also told you that this person is not in hiding? They're actually quite visible. 
And at the end of this video, you will not believe what this Coca-Cola wallet really symbolizes. One of the most shocking videos that I've ever done on here. If y'all ready, I'm ready. Let's get into it. To all my newcomers, this is Gematria. When you script a death, the numbers will always align. Left eye dead at 30, left eye equals 30. Left eye also equals 33. From her death day, which is April 25th, 2002, to what would have been her upcoming birthday, 527, is a total of 33 days. And then Saweetie, the name equals 33. Oh no, be wise, real. Don't expose her like that. Don't do it to him like that. I do it all the time, all right? This is nothing new. This is Hollywood. I've been showing y'all how they do this. It's all over my page, and she is not exempt. For the ones that don't know what this is right here, this is called Gematria, a.k.a. The Matrix, a.k.a. The Practice of Coding Numbers into Letters and Words, which means what I'm about to tell you right now is not a coincidence at all. Left eye's real name at the top, Lisa Lopez, it equals 135 in a reverse. Diamante, the generated name for her character, Saweetie, it equals 135. And the full name for her generated character, Saweetie, the real generated name, Diamante Cueva Valentine Harper, equals 135 in a full reduction. Lisa Left Eye Lopez was born on the 27th. The character, Saweetie, was born on the 2nd of July, 27, 27, two slash seven. You're really supposed to say the day first and then the month, but only in America, we still do it backwards where the month is first and the day is second. She is also featured on the track with this artist by the name of Louie called Talking About, where she says in her verse, bad Lil B from the West Side, pretty and she rapped like left eye. You could have said Lil' Kim. You could have said Missy Elliott. You could have said Eve. You could have said Foxy Brown. Out of all names, you say Left Eye? Come on now. Does anybody remember that show that used to come on Nickelodeon called All That? Okay. Does anybody remember the group that used to sing the theme song for All That? It was TLC, right? Okay. Does anybody remember who had the only rap verse on that theme song? It was Left Eye, right? Okay. So why is Saweetie wearing this shirt right here? Man. Are y'all ready to see the significance and the symbolism behind this Coca-Cola wallet that left eye was flashing right before the alleged crash? You have been warned. Let's do it. Sweetie's first ever live broadcasted performance was on a Coca Cola stage. Not a Pepsi stage, not a Sprite stage, not a Mountain Dew stage, not a Dr. Pepper stage. A Coca Cola stage. As Sweetie is supposed to be dropping an album this year called Pretty B Music. And that equals 211. Well, how ironic is it that from Left Eye's death, which is April 25th, all the way to Saweetie's birthday, which is July 2nd, that is a total of two months, one week, and one day. No coincidence. There is a rumor going around on the internet saying that she is Akil, the MC's wife, Fatima. And if you know who Akil, the MC, has been accused of being, then you know. Like I said, if you know, you know, I remember a lot of young girls crying the day that they found out that Left Eye had passed on and it's an emotional attachment for sure. She's an idol. But fast forward to now, we're finding out that these celebrities are faking their death. Okay, this stuff is not real. It's all stage, it's all play. Ask yourself a question. She was the only one to die in that Jeep crash. And then they were able to retrieve the video footage. I've been able to show you numerically, symbolically, and visually that none of this is a coincidence. It's the truth. The all that t-shirt, the Coca-Cola wallet to the Coca-Cola stage showing you the rebirth of an old artist. 
You don't get this artist without this artist is what I'm trying to tell you. But everybody has to remove that emotional part about it and start thinking real logically, man. This is how it's going down and Hollywood been doing it. My name is BY is real. But I don't do conspiracy. I do real ass information. I'll let you. The way he broke that down leaves you nothing but curious. It's like, really? That's that's next level right there, man. Well, you guys, hey, that's another one in the books. I appreciate every single one of you guys. Big shout out to iTrack fam for tapping in and watching another one with me. If you haven't already, go ahead and smash the like button. Smash the subscribe button if you're not already a part of the iTrack fam. And I will definitely catch you on the next one.